Lift your hands and sing it again. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Resurrection Sunday, yes. everyone. Welcome to church. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. indeed. I didn't even know you were going to do that. I told him I was going to throw him a curveball. I know it. There it oh, is. man. <laughs> that was a softball. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. it's, 
It's a long story. Guys, we're excited for Easter Sunday. We have a lot of exciting things yeah. going on. We were just getting ready to go live, and all of a sudden we hear everyone just erupt in cheers. Yeah. Someone just got engaged back there. How As exciting is that? As if this day could get any better. I know, right? This is amazing. New yeah. life everywhere. Yeah. So this is exciting. We want to hear how you're celebrating Easter today. Are you watching with friends and family? Are you making a huge feast? Are you hiding the Easter eggs? Yes. We would love to hear What's your, your favorite Easter, Easter candy? Favorite love Easter that. candy. Is it Jelly Bellies? Is it Cadbury? I don't know. Those are all my favorites. So, Also, be. good news. I heard the Easter Bunny uh, saw his shadow this morning. <laughs> so six more weeks of spring. Is that... That's how it, that's that's how it goes, right? Yes. That's why we have the Easter Bunny. It's true. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> okay, guys. This guy. Those okay, are the he's jokes. Throwing me the curve. I'm a okay. dad, so I have jokes. Yeah. So this is exciting. But on a serious note, <laughs> <laughs> and we really do have a great uh, Sunday planned for you. We have the amazing Bill Johnson speaking yes. today. It's going to be an incredible family service for everyone. We have Paul and Hannah McClure. Come on. Worship. Come and on. We are just so thankful that you gathered with us today. And we are just loving seeing your comments. We're all just, I think there's just this great feeling of anticipation and excitement because obviously every day we celebrate the risen King. But it is so amazing to come together for this one purpose in mind today to celebrate the risen Lord. And I just want to declare over you that as we are worshiping and, and celebrating uh, the risen lamb that you would see, we talked about on Good Friday, we talked about how we can see our brokenness in him and that it's really yeah. impossible to get to the resurrection without the death. And we need to see that death. And so there are things that feel like death in your life. And I just I'm just speaking over you that you would see that death found in his death so that you can come into the fullness of the risen King yes. today, that you can see your resurrection in his today. And so we just declare that over you, that as you are um, joining in with us in this service, that the Holy Spirit will bring to your mind the things that he's saying, this is what I want you to leave behind today. And this is the new life I have for you to walk in today. And I also just want to speak over everyone too. If you have kids who are not living for the Lord right now, I just declare that they are coming back, that this Easter is a turning point for them yes. and that the, the Lord is drawing them back home, back to Him, and that you will see a full recovery and the full reward of your faithfulness towards your children and towards the Lord and that they will come back and serve the Lord. Yeah. Look at, we're seeing hello from Germany. Love Amazing. It. Come on. We have some friends out there who've been in Germany, actually, yes. Ben and Heather yes. Armstrong out there celebrating in, in Germany. So happy Easter to everyone in Germany. Yeah. And hello from Texas. Yeah. That's our favorite country, yeah. right? <laughs> we lived in Texas. Two of our kids yeah. were born in Texas. Yes. We love Texas. Yes. What else have we got over here? Yeah. Poland, uh, Indonesia. Yes. Love it. Amazing, amazing. Oh, man. Well, you know, I woke up this morning and the Lord highlighted a scripture for me. It was Romans 6, 23 that says uh, that the wages of sin is death. Uh, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And I just love that. Like, it is a gift. Jesus is our gift that we receive. We could never do anything to earn it, but He paid our price. And uh, I'm just I overcome with a sense of gratitude toward the fact that God loved us, loved us so much that He gave His only Son and we get to receive Him as our Lord and Savior. And maybe it's the first time you're on this uh, stream or I'm joining in as part of our Bethel online family. We are so thankful that you are here and you are going to get an incredible word today, but I want you to know that Jesus is your gift, that God, the good and loving Father, loved you so much that He gave you this gift so that you could be with Him for all eternity because that is why we were designed for eternal relationship with our good and loving Father. Yeah, so we're excited to celebrate that, to celebrate the only way it was possible and it's through the death and life, the resurrection of Jesus. So. Join with us, join in to worship, get all your family joined around you and enter in and it's going to be an incredible Sunday and we'll see you right after service.
Why don't you stand with me this morning? I know we are, we are a packed house. So if you have an extra seat next to you, will you, wave, will you raise your hand if you have an extra seat next to you or you would like your spouse to sit somewhere else? Just wave your hand, give their seat away. No, I'm teasing. Listen, it is gonna be a great day. It, it's gonna be a great day because, because this is the day we celebrate everything that matters that Jesus rose from the dead, he conquered the grave, we now no longer have to fear sin, we, now we get heaven, and all we have to do is receive it. I'm not gonna preach, but I'm super excited about today. Today is a celebratory day, okay? If you missed our, um, I, I, our Black Friday service, I'm sorry, our Goods Friday service, <laughs> teasing, it was phenomenal. Go back and watch it if you would like something like that. It was really, really good, and one other thing, Today, if you were in the room about 20, 15 minutes ago, somebody got engaged in our service right over there. So all, all this, yes. So all of the single women, I just want you to prepare your hearts because you never know what's gonna happen. And then also our overflow room, we love you. Listen, we're so glad that God isn't just in one room. He's everywhere. And we just pray that you're blessed as you're with us. And then those who are watching online as well, we love you as well. It is a good day to be together. So look at the person next to you and say, you look really good today. And I'm glad you're here.
Let's sing it together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Come on, this is, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I see
Jesus, that I would be set free. I am free because of you. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. All that you've done for me. All that you've done for me. So thankful, Jesus. Oh, lift up a thankful song of praise today. To the worthy, worthy King of Kings. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift your voices. Lift up Thanksgiving this morning. So thankful, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain for us. Worthy is the Lamb. Yes, worthy is the Lamb to receive blessing and honor, glory and power to the Lamb, to Jesus, to Jesus. Good news this morning. 
for Christ the King. Come on, sing it again, then on. Then on the third at break of dawn, the Son of Heaven then rose again. time is so good this morning to Jesus. Oh Lord, I... One more time, see you. And oh, praise the name of the Lord, our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore, For endless days we will see another shout of praise to him this morning. Thank you. Precious blood of Christ
declare this morning yes I am alive by the precious blood oh it's only by the blood
about the blood of Jesus Nothing but the blood of Jesus oh, Nothing but the mercy of Jesus Sing that chorus again, please sing Jesus, 
and all hail. Come on, one more time. Raise your hands and sing it straight to his heart. And all hail, King Jesus. All hail, the Lord of heaven and earth. All hail, King Jesus. And all darkness now has ended in the kingdom of light in the kingdom of light forever under your dominion you're the king of my life you're the king of my life and you ain't above it all
Come on, he reigns. He reigns. He's alive. Woo! He's alive. <laughs> Thank you, God. Every other religious leader and philosopher throughout all of time is still dead. But Jesus is alive. And when he rose from the grave, his whole word was validated by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. He's alive. He's in this room. He's there online with you. He's with our families. He's alive. Jesus, look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is alive. Say, Jesus reigns. Come on, let's lift up a shout of praise that he's alive. He's alive. You know, in a room this size, I'd just be curious to see how many people in this room, you've been set free from fear and anxiety and shame. Raise your hand. Jesus is alive. How many in this room, you've been set free from addiction? Any kind of addiction? Raise your hand. Jesus is alive. Who in this room, you got supernaturally healed of cancer? Right over here, right over here. <laughs> Jesus is alive. <laughs> Woo, come on, come on. How many guys got set free from pornography? Raise your hand, come on. Jesus is alive. <laughs> Whatever you need today, we have a blood-backed covenant with a God of love who gave himself on Calvary and shed his own blood. The strength of the covenant we have with God is based in the blood of Jesus, the pure and spotless Lamb of God who was slain to take away the sin of the world, the brokenness of humanity. There is only one way to the Father, and that's through faith in Jesus and what he's done. Amen. Woo. Man, if you need breakthrough in this room, I feel like earlier when we were just worshiping, I feel like God wants is here to redeem. The redeeming power of Jesus is here. And if you need redemption in your life, if you need redemption in your life, redemption in your family, redemption in your finances, on redemption in your mind, today is the day of, now is the time of salvation. If you're watching online and you feel like, gosh, I wish I had that testimony, it's available, you do, amen? So if you're in this room and you need breakthrough at all in your life, just raise your hand up right now and we're gonna pray and we're gonna go after it right now. There's gonna be miracles that are about to happen in this room. Let's go. Does anybody here have cancer in this room right now? You have cancer. All right, we're gonna pray for him. Just declare the resurrection power of Jesus. Come on. Somebody got in a car accident three to four years ago and you've been battling trauma and it's been scary to just get in a car and drive. Who is that? Anybody? Looking? If you see him, just grab him and pray for him. They're right over there. Okay, right there. We just break that trauma off of you in Jesus' name. We declare peace to your heart, peace to your mind. In fact, if you're in this room right now and you've had trauma of the mind, it could be anything from PTSD to car accident to divorce to all sorts of stuff. If that's you and you just want it to be gone, we're gonna declare it ends right now. If that's you, just raise your hand up right there where you're at. When you get around them, you're gonna pray for them, and here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna put your hands around their head. Bill's done this, and we're gonna lift like a steel band right off of their head, and we're gonna, de we're gonna declare by the power of Jesus, it ends right now. It ends right now. Jesus is alive. Come on, there is, he has no equal. He has no rival. Come on, go ahead and pray for anybody who raised their hand that needs breakthrough. Just raise it up right now. It ends right now. We declare it now. Trauma ends right now in Jesus' name. It ends right now. Online, I just declare the resurrection power of Jesus, that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead would raise you up right now, set you free, wash you clean in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, God.
Somebody here has been having chronic migraines. We just release healing to you right now in Jesus' name. If that's you, raise your hand up and grab it. Pray for them right now. Chronic migraines go down. I really just keep eating this overwhelming sense that there's this thought that there's crippling fear. People have been crippled by fear in this previous season and fear is broken right now. It's broken. You don't have to even fear fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear. If that's you, just, just, just grab it right now. Just raise your hand up right now and just receive it. Just receive it. Thank you, God. Praise God. Hey, if you're in this room right now and you feel better, just wave a hand in the air. Just wave a hand. Come on, look at that. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Jesus is alive. <laughs> Jesus is alive. Come on. Hey, the last thing I want us to do right now is just put your hand on your heart. For some reason, the Holy Spirit, He likes to take me back to my first couple of years in Christ and remind me of, of when I first met Jesus, that that grace is so fresh and it's just as new today as it was then. Do you, do you remember when you first met Jesus, when he gave you that grace? Just right now, just put thanksgiving on your lips. And say, Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for washing me in your blood. Thank you for sustaining me. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you, just give him thanks right now. God, thank you that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, that you change not. Thanks, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> mm. Amen. Amen. So good. Amen. Jesus is alive. Why don't you turn around, find somebody you don't know and tell them you look better after that. Hey, happy Resurrection Sunday to you. If you've got a seat next to you, would you raise your hand? We got three seats up in front here. I just, I kicked my kids out into the dining room. So we got three choice seats are open up front here. So. Hello to everybody in the overflow room and in the other overflow room and in the other overflow room. It's wonderful to be together. If you've got a hand, a seat next to you that's available, would you raise your hand up? If you have two seats, raise up two fingers. And if you have one, raise up one. Just make sure you put your purse or your jacket off that chair if you would so we can uh, make sure we got every seat full. We've got a couple seats up front as well. Good, all right. Wanted to help with that. Steve Moore's coming up. He's got some news for you. Here's Steve Moore. Come on, how's everybody doing today? Resurrection Sunday, doing well? If you are a first time guest with us or if you're even watching for the first time online, put it in the chat that it's the first time. But if you're a first time guest, can you raise your hand for us? We wanna welcome you. If you're in the overflow, I'm welcome you. And then if you would, please just keep your hand raised. I know it might feel a little bit awkward, but we have a gift for you. And so we have ushers coming around. They wanna give you a gift here. Um, and so just keep that hand raised, some fun little things with that, but we're so glad you're here. We're so glad that you're joining us online if it's the first time. Uh, today is a good day. Um, also have an announcement that tonight we will be doing baptisms uh, in the 6 p.m. service. If you are interested in being baptized, I can't think of a better day to get baptized than today. How many know we were co-crucified and co-raised? It's a prophetic act of showing that you have been raised with Christ in a new creation. If you're interested in being baptized, Come to the dining room. It's right behind the stage. Don't walk through the stage. Walk through this hallway in the back. We have a class at 5 p.m. to take you through that if you're interested. Make sure you wear dark clothes. Bring a towel and a change of clothes. Hopefully, I don't have to go into more detail about that. And then we have, uh, I'll be giving more announcements up there with Church News. Hi, Bethel family. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We are so excited to celebrate the power of Jesus' resurrection with you today. 
Here's this week's church news. Bethel Singles is a community for singles that provides organic opportunities for connection, growth, and fun. They have some incredible events planned this month, including a Kaylee, which that's not it, babe. It's a night of Scottish dancing, not Irish dancing. They're a lot of fun though. A worship night and more. Check out Bethel.com forward slash singles to learn more. If you want to expand your capacity for joy and hope, this one's for you. Join Steve and Wendy Backlund for a Bounding Hope and Joy conference on April 28th and 29th. It's going to be a time of acceleration, activation, and breakthrough as we hear from Steve and Wendy, Aaron and Connie Jones, and worship with Hannah Waters. Tickets are limited, so register now. Join Bethel Kids for an unforgettable week of fun, faith, and discovery at Bethel Kids Revival Camp. This overnight camp for third to fifth graders is a powerful time where your child can pursue the presence of God and learn to stay rooted in love and truth. At Bethel Healing School, we will explore a heavenly culture that leads us into a lifestyle of healing and miracles. I have to say, this was the first event I've ever been a part of with Bethel over 12 years ago, and it changed my life. It was the first time I ever experienced the tangible presence of God. And so I wanna encourage you to come, be inspired, activated, and launched as you gain powerful tools for ministry that Jesus modeled. Register today at Bethel.com forward slash events. That's it for this week's Church News. If you missed any of these announcements, go to Bethel.com forward slash church news to learn more. Have an amazing week. And have a great rest of your Easter day. All right. Hey, I'm John Taylor with Bethel Missions. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I tell you, as I got to greet people this morning, I got to say that in four or five different languages, or last, at least hear it. We've got such an intercultural uh, congregation, and how powerful it is to get to celebrate his life together this morning. Hey, it's offering time. As our ushers come forward, if you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand. Just keep it up until they reach you. You know what to do as far as our website, our QR code here. Hey, I, I thought of Romans chapter 12 and Paul's words there. He's laying out in Romans the incredible salvation that we have. And then he, he in those verses there, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable form of worship. So as we prepare to give our offerings to him, I wanna challenge you this morning as we stand up. Also, God is after you. He's not just after your money, he's after you. And I want you just to say, what, Lord, do you want me to offer you afresh today? Let's stand up. Let's read offering number two together. Let's declare this as we give to the Lord. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for jobs, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations, anointings, giftings, and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessing, and increase upon me so I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah. I want you just to hold your, your phone out or your offering out in front of you, and let's just pray over this offering. Jesus, we thank you for the incredible privilege to give just a small portion of what you've given to us. Lord, we bless this offering, and we just pray that you would take it to touch lives, touch nations through it, and we'll give you all the glory. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. And now would you please welcome Pastor Bill Johnson. Good, good morning, please. Please be seated. Happy Easter. He is risen. He's risen indeed. He's risen indeed. Yeah, you got to get that right. <laughs> uh, 
By the way, um, Jean-Luc Truscal from Switzerland, wonderful, wonderful man of God, and a dear friend of mine and of this house, will be speaking next Sunday night, not tonight. Tonight is baptism and Chris. Uh, it'll be tonight, but next Sunday night is going to be Jean-Luc. And he is one of the most bizarre, mir- literally miracle anointings that I've, I've ever seen. And, uh, and he, he, his, his friendship moves me, as does his display of the love of God. And so, anyway, that's next Sunday night. And, and he's in the school of ministry, too, the next day. Not that you can do anything about that, but just want you to know what you can't have. That's, that's what I do. I, I basically <laughs> announce to people what you can't have. So, um, Also, uh, before Christmas, I promoted this book uh, by one of our own, Carrie Lloyd. It's called uh, Legacy Letters. And it's about capturing uh, the rich, rich uh, heritage of, of every family. It's asking the questions you wish you would have asked a family member before they passed to capture the, uh, the legacy of a family. And uh, so I promoted it for Christmas last December, not realizing there weren't any copies available. So once again, I told you what you couldn't have. That's basically, that's my job, as to torment and tease. And uh, no, there were hardly any copies available. And so the publisher just published a whole bunch more, so we've got them. So I just wanted to let you know that this is available. Really, really cool thing to be a part of. Who has a, a family that you really don't want written down? What, oh, no, that's not the wrong way, to, <laughs> wrong, way, wrong way to promote this thing. Who has... <laughs> you, you're pointing at your husband? <laughs> Anybody want this? You know, right here. The, the, yeah, brown shirt. Come on up, yeah. Uh, oh, sure, sure. Merry Christmas. Yeah, uh, Chris's anointing was getting on me for a moment there. I, I, you know, he hands out a book on spiritual warfare and asks if there's anybody demon-possessed that would like to have it. So I don't know. I, it just started to get on me, and I'm going to blame him since he's not in the room. So, All right. Three friends from a local congregation were asked, when you're in your casket, and friends and congregation members are mourning over you, what would you like for them to say? Daniel said, I'd like for them to say, I was a wonderful husband, fine spiritual leader, and a great family man. Roger said, I'd like for them to say, I was a wonderful teacher and servant of God who made a huge difference in people's lives. Frank said, I'd like for them to say, look, he's moving. That's just so pitiful. That's, it's, I, I, am, I am majoring in the pitiful today. So, And this is, this is what I've read many, many times. But it's Easter, and I have to read it today. It's, it's kind of obligation. It's an obligation. <clears throat> A man and his wife and his mother-in-law went on vacation to the Holy Land. <laughs> How many of you don't mind hearing old ones again, if they're good? Yeah, yeah. While they were there, the mother-in-law passed away. The undertaker told them, you can have her shipped home for $5,000, or you can bury her here in the Holy Land for $150. The man thought about it. He told them he'd just soon have her shipped home. The undertaker asked, why would you spend $5,000 to ship her home when it would be wonderful to have her buried here, spend only $150? The man replied, a man died here 2,000 years ago. He was buried here. Three days later, he rose from the dead. I just can't take that chance. <laughs> there, there is nothing right about that story, but, but I, I like it so much. <laughs> Today's going to be a, a little bit different in this. I have been, uh, I've had it in my heart for a while now, for probably months, to have at some point where we could share in communion together but do so in light of a prophetic word from one of our closest and most important friends, and that's Lou Engel. The Lord had been uh, speaking to him for, this is it now going back a year, about what he calls the Great Communion Revival. And uh, at the end of my message, we're going to show uh, a little video. We're going to share in communion, pray together over some specific things. 
But my hope, my cry, my prayer for us today is that we would have some, I don't know, some kind of a, a sense of, of what is upon us as it is connected to the privilege of sharing in the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus. I, I feel like the Lord's going to deposit something in us today. And, and I'll, I'll be honest with them. I'm, I'm not coming to this with like fear and trembling. I'm coming not having a plan, just having a conviction, if that makes sense. I, I have got this sense. I know what that time looked like for me uh, and Benny uh, when Lou came to our house. He flew to our house. I forget where he was in the country, but he flew literally to come to our home to spend 20 minutes just to have Benny pray for and for us to share in communion together. I, I, I don't like taking the things that are just personal and assume that they're for everyone, but I believe that this one was broad enough that it actually applies to everybody in the room. I, you, you remember the, the, the verse that says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it cannot bear fruit. Something has, is occurring in my heart with this storyline. How about we live life in such a way that our life impacts people all around us, but we live life in such a way that even our death testifies yes. of God. Because I, I watched it. I watched with my own wife, her home going. Within days, and this surprised me, I, I know the concept and I say amen to the truth, but when I saw the effect of her death, and the fruit that it brought to the kingdom, I was stunned, absolutely stunned. And as long as you maintain the sense of eternity and the, the beauty of fruitfulness in loss, it gives you legal reason to celebrate in the most awkward moments. Live life in such a way that even in death, there's a domino effect of how you did life to bring people into the kingdom and really bless and prosper people. You take a kernel of corn, you plant it. Nobody would plant a kernel of corn if it grew back one kernel of corn. Like, you know, let's just eat it. <laughs> but the fact that it bear, bears an ear of corn, an ear of corn has between six and 800 kernels of corn. That's quite an increase from one kernel of corn that died and was buried. And that is really, I believe, a prophetic invitation for everybody in this room to live with eternity in mind. Something happens when you live with eternity in mind. We think in terms of investing for the big pictures, not all, just about here. In fact, we're gonna read scripture in just a moment where Paul basically says, you know, if, if, we, if we are living for the Lord, and there's no eternity, there's no resurrection, then we are the most pitiful people around. Why would he say that? Because eternity is to have such a mark on how we think and how we live that to live without it, we can't possibly succeed in what we've been invited to do. So I'm, I'm believing that the Lord is going to upgrade us in purpose, upgrade us living for eternity. Amen. Open your Bibles, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And uh, we're going to conclude with um, communion and prayer about that. But I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes. Actually, I won't be talking a whole lot. I'm going to be mostly reading. This will be a, a repeat of Friday where we, just, we do the public reading of Scripture. But open to 1 Corinthians 15. This is, uh, uh, I'm sure it's the in my thinking anyway, it's the premier chapter on the resurrection. The resurrection is dealt with all through scripture, but this uh, from beginning to end is about the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus is so critical that there literally is no conversion without it. <clears throat> the Bible teaches that there's not even forgiveness of sin without the resurrection. Which I don't want to say it offends me like, a, like I, I'm mad about it. It offends me in the sense that my thinking has always been it's the blood of Jesus that wipes away the power of sin. So why is it the resurrection that gives me 
forgiveness. Come back next week and I'll tell you. I'm, uh, I'm just... <laughs> no, it's, it's like the cross where the blood was shed needed an amen. Where Jesus obtained for me what I could not obtain for myself. I was faced with absolute hopelessness, no cure, no remedy, no repair, no fix. Nothing I could do could repair my sinful condition. So Jesus became a man and faced my enemies on my behalf so that when he won, I would inherit the victory. That's salvation. And that death of Christ, where his blood was shed to atone for, cover, wipe out the record of sin and the power of sin, when that was done, it still needed one more voice. And it was the amen from heaven that said, the sacrifice has been accepted. And it's the resurrection. The resurrection is the crowning touch that says the offering has been received. You are free. Chapter 15, 1 Corinthians. We're going to read a number of verses. So how many of you have your Bibles with you? I hope you got them. Got them open. Got your phone. You got your holy Bible on your phone. That's fine. As long as it's there, I'm good. Just read along with me because it's going to be, uh, we've got a number of verses to talk through. We'll begin with verse three. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What I, what I, I'm emphasizing those two verses because I want you to take special note of any time it says according to scripture. Jesus did this often when something was experienced. He would mention this was, this was to fulfill the prophets. This was to fulfill scripture. Here's something key for us to understand about the prophetic. Prophecy is, is not, it's mostly not to let us know what's going to happen. It's mostly to let us know what just happened he already knew about. That was, that was much better than their response. Well, that was, that was excellent. It, it's, it's true. Mistakes are made when we hear the prophetic and we draw our charts on what's about to happen because we're almost always wrong. There's supposed to be a prophetic sense and an appetite for the future. The prophetic is to stir that, provoke that in us, that we pay a price for what God is wanting to do. But we also approach it knowing we see through a glass darkly. And when something unfolds and we see it in scripture, we realize the sovereign one knew all along that this was going to happen. It's to build a confidence in a father who is in charge. Let's move on to verse 12. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? So here's the, the deal that Paul is dealing with. He's talking to a group of people that may accept that Jesus was raised from the dead, but they don't think there's a resurrection for people. And so he's confronting that, and he's basically telling them, listen, if you don't think you're going to raise from the dead, then neither did Jesus raise from the dead, because his resurrection is your resurrection. The resurrection of Christ is so central to everything we are and do and believe. It is not negotiable. It is not a peripheral issue. It is the issue. The cross and resurrection. All right. Verse 13, but if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not raise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. 
If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. That kind of cuts to the chase, doesn't it? I like just the reading of scriptures. Uh, the public reading of scripture is so essential. And, and some of this, I, I, I'm, just, I'm wrecked by just reading it. Verse 20 says, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. First fruits. Another term that is used many times in scripture is that Jesus is the firstborn of the dead. Jesus is not the first one to be raised from the dead. He raised many. The Old Testament had resurrections. My favorite of all time that I want to get the video on is what that army of dry, that valley of dry bones. I got to see that one where all them bones come back together and flesh grows on it and then there's breath. That one sets the record. And that was Old Testament. Go oh God, that was awesome. But all of those who were raised from the dead died again. Jesus is the firstborn from the dead and that he is never to die again. Now remember, as, as God, that was an unnecessary journey. Uh, it's, it's never been God versus Satan. There, there, there is no contest there. It, it, Satan is not the opposite of God. He's a, by comparison, he's hardly a blip on the radar screen. He's limited and finite that God uses as a chess piece to demonstrate his glory and his sovereign will. You know, the devil has power. He doesn't have any authority unless we give it to him, unless we give him ours. He has power. But even that, if you cut a tree, a branch off of a tree, the leaves are still green. It just doesn't know it's been separated from its source. And that's the devil. There's still green leaves, but it is fading as we speak. That's why he's in the open so often right now. It's not his best card, it's his last card. So this whole idea of first fruits, Jesus endured what he did as a human, eternally God, but as a human to win for us what we couldn't win for ourselves. And so in his resurrection, the first fruits, the firstborn of the dead, he became what every one of us will become. He is the first, so he's the firstborn from the dead, but he's first also in preeminence. He will always be the reigning son of man. Verse 21. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. The next portion of scripture here talks about uh, that the last enemy is death and that will be put under the feet of Jesus. Following that is the warning that losing perspective on resurrection makes sin more appealing. And then it comes down to verse 47. The first man was of the earth made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Okay, now here's the picture. We've got Adam, the first Adam, and then we have the last Adam. The first one was made of dust. The last one, first born from the dead, is made of the heavenly. People ask me these verses, what does this mean? I'm clueless, I just like them. <laughs> Verse 48, as was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. Listen, when you became born again, you lost the right to say, I'm only human. I just felt unusually good to say. I just want to know. And we bless our online community too. Thanks for watching us. We love you guys so much. So thankful for you. Verse 48 again. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, Jesus, 
so also are those who are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. My goodness gracious. I don't, I don't know if that does anything for you. Why don't you just declare this with me? We shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. We ought to say that again. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Listen, eternity is real. It's more real than time. Heaven is more real than earth. And we are being schooled, trained for eternity. And there's little mysterious glimpses that are given to us in scripture of what that's like. And here he makes the proclamation. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Jump over to verse, oh, let's go to verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, I've seen that sign, that verse in church nurseries. (laughs) It's profoundly prophetic. (laughs) They may not all sleep, but they're all going to get changed. (laughs) I saw... I saw, you know, churches have signs out front. I saw a picture of a church this last week that said, women, unless they're still in diapers, you can't change them. <laughs> Don't, I'm, I'm, the, be, I'm the, the messenger. I'm not the, I didn't make that one. I thought I'd get more amens out of that one. I, I, I thought I'd get the, the, the amen of testimony, but I'm not hearing it. I don't know. <laughs> Verse 56, the sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I want you to look at Verse 58 again. And any parent with uh, crying kids or whatever, I don't mind that you stay in. We'll we'll just adjust. I, I like to have children in this atmosphere. Verse 58 again. This verse is one of the first verses I memorized as a as a young man. And I can't tell you why, except it just kind of prodded me. It provoked me. And it is the transition verse that I want to use for going from this that we've talked about in the resurrection to moving into communion and specifically a global communion revival, which I cannot say I understand. I just have that sense that it's, it's, exactly, it's exactly that. Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I, I don't know if this makes sense to you. Verse 58 the summons to be all in is the conclusion to our faith in the resurrection. Let me put it differently. This summons into being all in, living absolute abandoned in the work of the Lord is the only logical conclusion to seeing the resurrection. Nothing as all-encompassing as the resurrection would demand anything less than all in. We're going to uh, watch a video. I think it's about four minutes, five minutes maybe. I'll, I'll be up front with you at the very onset. It's, it's not easy to understand. It was taken from a phone. I just like the moment. Lou says in the video that it was the day my wife died. I think it was the day after, but it doesn't really matter. 
this gathering, this that we're about to do is not about Benny's death, but it is a platform for a specific message. So I'm, I'm going to use it for that reason and that reason only. Living life in such a way that your life, even after you're buried, still brings fruit should be a desirable outcome for everybody in the room. The people would come to Christ. The people would have a hunger. People would have a refined focus. All these things would take place. We're gonna watch this video. Try hard to understand. Uh, enough of it's understandable that you'll, you'll get the just of it. And that's, I, I could have found others, but I, I like this one. So, In fact, I have others, but this is, this is the one I wanted to watch. So we're going to do this. When we're through, we'll share in communion together, and I'll just try to take us through that particular journey. All right? Go ahead and put, uh, put the video on. It's very sad how the body of Christ treats one another. We can be, need to be brethren accusers or, or the better blood people. God's going to make us better blood people. But I was there uh, with Aunt Redding, and I had a dream. And in the dream, I was asking Bill Johnson, I was asking him, where can you catch fish on the Sacramento River? Of course, Redding's on the Sacramento. He said, you catch fish where the river turns red. I ran down the Sacramento River, turned red. The fishermen were all along the banks catching fish. The last 20 years, we've had dreams of a great, uh, great coming communion, blood of life. I've only heard the blood in these songs. And just, I would return from Israel recently, and I had a dream when I came back, and in the dream, I was trying to tell Bill Johnson the dream of I had my headphones on, and I couldn't, I couldn't get the word out, I couldn't remember the dream, I took my headphones off, and it was like a spirit of prophecy came upon me, and I began to tell Bill Johnson the dream again. Where can you catch fish along the sacrament? And in the dream, suddenly I began weeping, saying, it's the great communion of life. For two days, I couldn't get it up my mind, until I called Bill Johnson and said, Bill, can I come to Reading and take communion with you and Benny Johnson? You heard about Benny. He passed away. I was taking communion earlier this year, 40 days of taking communion. And on the table in the house I was staying was a book called The Power of Communion by Benny Johnson. Bill said she's not well. You can spend 20 minutes with us. I said, I'll come for 10 minutes. I went, and for 20 minutes, I spent time with Bill and Benny Johnson. And I said, I did not come here primarily to pray for your healing. I came to take communion. And I read your book, and I, I said to her, if you pass, I want you to lay your hands upon me, that I would carry your legacy. She's been doing communion every day for a year. On the, the river of the sacrament. It's the river of the sacrament. It's the revival of the blood where the center will not be a pulpit. It will not be a mystics movement or a fancy. It will be all those, but the center of the throne will be a lamb. And the blood will break the accuser of the brethren. and awakening as to what I'm hearing today. She laid her hands upon me. I said, if you'll allow me, Lord, I will take Benny, Benny Johnson's legacy and I will carry the communion revival that I believe she's been leading for years. And why are we here on the very day she died unless there's an anointing? <laughs> I, uh, 
I like to fish. Natural and spiritual. (laughs) And when you use a fly or a lure, you're looking for hungry fish. But when you use a net, you catch fish that aren't hungry. Revival is a net. I believe in the preaching, the sharing of our faith with people because we find those that are hungry. But in the mighty outpourings, people are gathered in that had no questions, had no curiosity, had no interest, but they find themselves in a place where they drink freely of the love of God and are forever changed. The great communion revival is that. I don't want to exalt Reading above its proper place, any place where people are gathered. But it does fascinate me. Reading in the Dutch is the word salvation. And the Sacramento River is the river of sacrament. Whether anyone else believes that we should. But that, that works. That's pretty significant. That's all. I, I mean, prophetic people don't even need that much information to get something powerful. You know, we, we've, we've worked with a lot less. So, so I think we should believe together for what is beyond our comprehension and way beyond our control, thankfully, for a great communion revival. There's something that God is resetting. It's almost like It's almost like a bone that's dislocated that gets reset. He's putting something back in place concerning the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus that will forever affect our approach to the rest of our life. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. We're going to share in communion together. Oh, I should have asked first, how many of you do not have the the cup and the the bread and the the blood? I apologize. I should have had that taken care of before before we stood. If uh, ushers, if you can come and put your hands up if you uh, still need. We've got uh, a whole bunch over here to my left. Yeah, just keep your hands up, ushers. Usherettes will get them to you. Super. There's still a a bunch over here to my left, your right. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, keep, keep your hand up if that's you. I don't want anyone left out. Thanks, thanks so much for helping us. The Bible says, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It also says there's only one name under heaven by which a person must be saved. It's the name Jesus. I would encourage and exhort and invite anybody in this room that does not have a personal relationship with Jesus to settle the issue right now. Right now. It doesn't need to be with great fanfare It just needs to be honest place of surrender from your heart where you in your heart, you turn to Jesus right where you're standing before you partake of this. This will not save anyone. It enhances the work that God has already done, but it will not save you. So I would encourage you just to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Please forgive me for my sin. I give you my entire life. You are my ambition from this point on. Now, we're going to pray certain things together. I like to take this bread, this wafer, and I like to make sure that I don't come to it as a, as a cracker. I come to it as the broken body of Jesus. It's important that I, that I make that transition that I'm not here just going through a religious routine. I'm actually encountering the presence of the Almighty God. And I want you to take that wafer and just break it as a reminder. Jesus became 
broken for you. In my home, when I take communion, which is often, I break it, and then I walk around my house and just pray for various situations to come up. Jesus became broken so we could be whole. He became empty so we could be filled. He was despised so we could be celebrated. He became sin so we could become righteousness. He bore affliction so we could be healed. And this that you hold in your hand is the testimony and is that shredded, broken, torn body of Jesus. The representation of his suffering that you might be healed. That we might be healed. So I want you to hold this before the Lord. And I want you to confess this with me. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Let's say it again. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Now I want you to pray for one friend that needs a miracle in their body. And I want you just, as though you could see them face to face, just to just declare over them, the broken body of Jesus is enough for what you're, what you're facing. Just take a moment. We want to include people in this. We declare that in Jesus' name. The broken body of Jesus is more than enough. <clears throat> Sickness is to our bodies what sin is to our soul. It's not in the will of God. There's no shame for it. It's just he made a way. So let's hold this before the Lord. And I, I like to just say this. You obviously don't have to do anything, but I like to just say, I receive your body into mine. That's, I receive your body into mine. Thank you, Lord. Wow. I've got this sense that some of you are going to have unusual dreams literally about the blood of Jesus or about the broken body of Jesus. And I encourage you, share them with us, please. I, feel, I just feel like something is opening up for us to see more clearly, to realize more clearly with greater conviction, greater understanding, the meaning of the broken body, the shed blood of Jesus. We know it is central to our faith. But I also know, I see through a glass darkly, as Paul would say. I see it dimly, and there's so much more. And I feel like God's about to open it up because it's going to accelerate this great communion revival. Hold this cup before the Lord. Now, it's the blood of Jesus that sets us free. Say that with me. The blood of Jesus sets me free. I heard years ago, Stacy Campbell, who is a dear friend of ours and a real prophetess of the Lord, I remember her saying she was watching TV, she was watching some uh, uh, news, uh, which I don't recommend, but she was watching some news. And, and, um, and she, she would see an international or national crisis, and out of her mouth would come the words, the blood of Jesus is enough for that. The blood of Jesus. Always be more impressed with the power of the blood than the power of any sin or problem. Are, are you with me? We have to keep that perspective. So, I want you to take a moment to pray for your family. Take at least one member of your family and just pray for them right now that Jesus would do a miracle in their lives. All right, take just a moment, give you 30 seconds or so. Those online at home, join us if you're able to, please. Yeah, we just declare the blood of Jesus sets them free. I also want to just prophesy that in this great communion revival, one of the initial signs of this that God is doing will be friends and family members that are not walking with the Lord get restored in this movement. So hold this before the Lord and say with me, I plead the blood of Jesus over my entire family. Every individual will serve the Lord. We will serve you 
in purity. We will serve you with passion. And we will serve you with power. So, Father, I ask that this beauty, the wonder of the gospel, will be demonstrated through this great communion revival. And together we say yes to the great communion revival. Amen. Let's partake of this together. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Wow, wow, wow. I'm so glad that we, uh, that I get to spend this day with you and that we get to spend this together celebrating what I can hardly wait to see as the waves of this Outpour and really come crashing in on our shores. So I'm, I'm hungry and looking forward to it. Let me ask the question. I realize people are moving around, but um, if we could just have ushers pick up these cups, pass them down to the end of the row. Just try not to pour the leftover grape juice in your neighbor's hand, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, all of our handshakes after this will be sticky. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask the question if I can have your attention. Is there anyone here that would say, Bill, today is my day to come to faith, a place of absolute surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ? I want forgiveness. I want to be changed. I give him everything I am, everything I have. If there's anyone in that category, put a hand up right where you are because I want to make sure we have a chance to celebrate you and to pray with you. Put a hand up high. There's anyone at all. Those who are watching online, we have pastors online. Put it in the in the text, and uh, and you will receive a ministry there. Okay, looks like you're all in. Wow, wow, wow! Thank you, Jesus. You know what? Why don't you give him thanks? Give him thanks. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm done. You're done. <laughs> I wasn't sure until just that moment. Now I know. Beautiful. If we could have the ministry team come on up, that would be a, a blessing to us as well. Again, Overflow Room, thank you. Overflow, Overflow Room, thank you for joining us. And Overflow, Overflow, Overflow Room, thank you for joining us as well. Dining Room, I'm looking at you. Well done. Uh, such a great day to continue to celebrate the Lord's presence. And we just, our ministry team's coming up right now. If you need a miracle in your body, you need somebody to agree with you for a broken relationship being healed. Uh, you need a financial breakthrough, anything that we can just agree with you. Some of you just need a fresh touch of the Lord. In my deeper life class, we got a chance to lay hands on people this morning and just ask for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit, power to be witnesses. And so, ministry team, come on up. And then if you want ministry, come up and find them. We'll orchestrate that. If you're in the overflow rooms, feel free to come in here if they don't have enough ministry team in there. Bless you. Have a beautiful Resurrection Sunday in the name of the Lord. Check, check, check. I'll start. Okay. Such an incredible service. And I just want to stay in this moment right now of the invitation that Pastor Bill gave to give all of you for all of Jesus. You know, there has to be an exchange. I think it was so powerful what Pastor Bill was talking about, about the seed. Yeah. You know, inherent to every man is the seed of sin. And that was the separation. Yeah. But not inherent to Jesus because he was not born of the seed of man. He was born of the seed of God. Because when the seed of man would go into the ground, it would just produce more death. But when the seed of God, when Jesus was buried, it produced life and life eternal with him. And so if you are saying, you're watching this right now and you're saying, you know what? I need to make that, that, that first exchange. I need to surrender all of who I am, all of that seed that will produce nothing but death and exchange it for his. And he's inviting you. He's saying, I came after you first. Will you join me in my death so that you can join me in my life? If that's you, let us know in the chat, but I want you to pray with us. Jesus, thank you 
for making the exchange possible for me, for being the way. I give you all of me for all of you. Thank you for dying on the cross, for taking my sin. Forgive me, Father. I die to the, for, to the former thing, the former me, the former life. And Jesus, be the Lord of my life and raise me into your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are celebrating and we're rejoicing with you. Let us know in the chat if you pray that. We have pastors online who want to pray with you and encourage you. And I know we have a special little place you can go to. Yeah, can you tell you, them about that? You can go to Bethel.com forward slash start here. We want to celebrate with you just as the angels in all of heaven are celebrating with you right now. And we want to um, just come alongside you and, and give you steps to disciple you um, in this in this new life that you have is so good. Yeah, and I'm seeing people on the on the chat saying raising their hand and we're just we just yeah. we love you and we're so excited for you and yes. you know something about if you joined us in the, right before we started service earlier today and we were joining all of you guys online we t I just, I just felt like God was saying, "Hey, you need to declare over them that family members or children who are have mm -hmm. strayed from the Lord that they're coming back and Pastor Bill just spoke about that again and yeah. it made me think about, you know, we're talking about this communion revival and there's something so well, obviously there's something so powerful about the blood of Jesus, but I know Pastor Bill was saying, we need to really focus in on that more. And it made me think about, about something that God had spoken to my heart years ago. And I think this is something that God has put forth today to speak to all of you about, about family members who are not walking with the Lord. And so, you know, uh, he brought me to the, to the point where um, Jesus had been arrested and brought before Pilate. Mm -hmm. And the crowds were calling out for his murder. They wanted him to be crucified. And they all declared in the crowd, may his blood be upon us and on our children. They were crying for the blood of Jesus because they wanted him killed. Mm -hmm. They were saying, we'll take the guilt. We will take the blame for the murder and the killing of Jesus. And even so much so, we will call it upon our children as well. And God showed me that moment and he said, you know, even the cry for the blood of Jesus has been redeemed. Mm. Because in order for salvation, in order for redemption, we need that blood of Jesus that he willingly shed for us. We need to declare and we speak over us and we speak over our children. We declare the blood of Jesus over them. And so I just declare over you that even the blood of Jesus has been, or the cry for the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. has been redeemed. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just declaring over you that there's no dark path, no dark story. There's no child who's walked away from the Lord or no family member who is not living for the Lord, who is not so far away that their yes. lives cannot be redeemed, that they cannot be touched by the Lord because even the cry for the blood of Jesus has been redeemed. So I just declare that over you, that your family members who are lost, that your children who have been lost, that they are coming home, that they will see redemption and you will see the goodness of the Lord in your life and theirs as well. Oh, so good. Well, what an incredible time that we got to spend together and hear it from Pastor Bill. That's one of those messages that I just couldn't actually take enough notes. I'm just like typing it feverishly on my phone. And one of those messages that you're gonna wanna go back and listen to over and over. But I love when he says that Jesus was made empty so that we could be made full. Yeah. Um, he was broken so that we could ma be made whole. He was rejected so that we could be accepted. Uh, he was um, despised so that we could be celebrated. He did this all for us. And you know, the word redeem, he's our great redeemer. The word redeem means regain possession of. And the Lord, through Jesus Christ, regained possession of his treasure, which is you and me and all of his children. We love you so much, Bethel Online family. We pray that you have a wonderful rest of your Easter. We pray that you have a blessed week and we can't wait to see you next week.
I won't forget the moment I heard you call my name Out of the grip of darkness Into the light of grace Just like Lazarus You brought me back to life Where there was dead religion Now there is living faith All of my hope and freedom I found in Jesus' name Just like Lazarus You brought me back to life
Yeah.